So we get a lot of questions about palpation in baby position and how to tell what position the baby's in or questions about how to tell if, you know, your baby or uterus is growing appropriately. And it's really hard to communicate that when you're not either in person or having a demonstration like we're hoping to be able to do for you today. So we're going to be showing you sort of the basics and the principles and techniques on both Marin's full-term belly as well as my little 13-week belly since it's something, palpation is something that really um, is something that's best practice and if you start early you can feel those changes as they're happening and get really good at knowing your body and your baby which is super exciting and empowering. So Marin's going to talk a little bit more about what we can learn um, through palpation and why it's such an interesting topic for a lot of people. Yeah, I love the contrast we have today between an early pregnancy uterus and baby and a late pregnancy uterus and baby because I think the art of palpation is truly an art and that means it comes with practice and it comes with starting early and really just getting to know your own body. So if it's been held out as something only midwives learn, which is pretty true nowadays, I don't think it's something doctors learn, but it's a skill anybody can learn, any woman can learn about her own body. And starting early in pregnancy, the benefits of palpation would be simply just learning, feeling your uterus as it grows slowly out of your pelvis. Um, if you've had pregnancies before, or even if you haven't, just feeling this growth and maybe comparing and contrasting with previous pregnancies. It could be that palpation early on um, gives you clues about dates. If you're not sure when you conceived, um, palpation could help. If you're curious if there's more than one baby perhaps, palpation could give you those clues. As well as other things going on with your body during pregnancy. Um, uterine fibroids would be one example, just because you're feeling so intently, you know, to your own body. And then of course later in pregnancy, I think we're more familiar with what those benefits are. Um, one would just be getting to know your baby. You know, people think that they don't need to palpate, and they certainly don't need to, but when you're in charge of your own pregnancy, it can be one way to really connect with your baby and your body when you feel what the baby's doing in there, what position he might be in, um, where he likes to kick. It can be really informative and fun. And also, later in pregnancy, you can get a really good picture of where to listen for the heartbeat, if that's something you're interested in. Um, as well as, again, gauging the size of the baby and the size of the uterus. And again, that could be in comparison to previous pregnancies, um, but just something, you know, information that you obtain for later use. So that's the whys. And we're going to talk more about how in a moment. Great. Hi again. So palpation of the uterus in early pregnancy is obviously going to give you different information than palpation of a uterus and baby in late pregnancy. We really can't determine fetal position or baby position until at least 26 to 28 weeks of pregnancy. So if you're watching this and you're getting excited to feel your baby and you're only 15 weeks, then you have a little while, um, but you can be thinking about these skills and you can certainly be palpating your own uterus. So at 15 weeks, say, you're not going to feel baby parts, but you are going to be able to feel your uterus and possibly sort of the mass of baby and placenta that might be um, able to be palpated on the anterior side of your uterus. That's what you would be feeling at that point. So you could use your fingers to just find the outline of a uterus, um, where it's firm, where it's not, what kind of feels like you, what doesn't feel like you, for lack of a better way of describing it, and just feeling how high up on your belly you feel that, how high, how, what the width is of what you feel. Um, so that palpation again would be earlier in pregnancy. For a later belly, after 28 weeks, um, Margo has some skills to describe as far as feeling a baby and parts. So one of the biggest sort of things people um, 
don't know, usually intuitively or something, um, but that's really important to the palpation process is how you feel, how you feel, and what you're feeling with. So some people use sort of like the tips of their fingers and they sometimes spread them apart. And that isn't as useful as if we keep our fingers together and we keep um, you know, them straight and we use sort of this part of our hands. And you'll see this more when we demonstrate in a little bit. Um, because this part is actually more sensitive and keeping it together means that you can get a picture of what's underneath this whole part of your hand as opposed to just sort of poking around. Um, and then the way that we do it is we use, um, Maren's going to talk a little bit more about pressure, but you know, we feel and we can move around sort of in these little circular motions um, to sort of get a sense of what's underneath. It's sort of like, I always imagine like you're revealing a picture underneath your hand as you go and um, we'll show you more what that looks like but that's sort of the basics about what you're doing with your actual hands when you're palpating. And our focus mainly is women out there that want to palpate their own bellies and perhaps teach their partners or family members to feel what's going on in their belly. So we will say that palpating someone else's belly entirely, you know, like midwife to client, that's kind of a whole different subject. Um, I think when we talk about how we're going to feel our own bellies, those are great tips. And as far as pressure goes, you really can't screw it up on yourself. Again, on somebody else, if you're learning for the first time, you'll feel awkward, you won't know what you're feeling, um, you'll be afraid you're going to hurt them maybe, but that's why on yourself, you know, it's the best way to practice. So the pressure you're going to need to feel through your abdominal muscles, through your uterine muscle, through to your baby is going to, to depend on your body type, um, you know, how many babies you've had. So you just want to press hard enough to get down to where the baby is and as long as you're not in pain, you know, it's not something I think that a baby minds. In fact, I think it's like a massage for a baby, especially when it's coming from the baby's own mother. So just use your common sense, um, but don't be afraid, I guess I should say, to, to kind of get in there a little more than you would just massaging your arm, because you really do have to go through several layers to sometimes feel a baby, especially when it's smaller rather than bigger. And so the final little piece before we talk about how we actually do this and show you how we actually do this is what we're actually going to be looking for when we're feeling a belly. So we have this cute little baby here today to sort of help us demonstrate this. And um, so when we're palpating, the first that well, we're going to talk about this later. I shouldn't get ahead of myself. But the main things we're looking for are the baby's back, the baby's bum, the baby's head, and their little small parts, their little feet and knees and hands and elbows. And um, again, depending on the size and age of your baby, um, you'll be able to feel these things more or less clearly. And I think depending on your body, you're able to feel these things more or less clearly. Um, and just like the timing and what your baby's doing in there. So it's all really fun. And I'm trying to think what else. Oh, the other thing I wanted to mention was not only are we just feeling the baby, you can also feel, especially earlier in pregnancy when there's not a baby necessarily, well, there is a baby, you could feel. Parts. Right. Parts. Um, but you can definitely be feeling for your fundus, which we're also going to show you, especially on my little belly, how to find that. And so um, those are the things that we're looking for, sort of the main things that we're trying to identify through this process. All right, so we are going to start with feeling my belly. And before we do that, we're going to talk just a little bit about what you want to do before you palpate on yourself or on a partner. Um, so I went to the bathroom and emptied my bladder. So that's important um, just for comfort's sake. And before 20 weeks, it can really, if your bladder is full, it can really change what you're feeling and kind of make the picture a little less clear. So I did that. Um, I'm gonna lay on this firm surface. Pretty firm. Pretty firm. If you're confused ever and feel like you're not getting a good sense, you can always move somewhere firmer that can help. 
especially really early on, I remember doing that a few times, like on my hardwood floor, right. just to like really get a sense of what was going on. But um, that and what else do we do? We'll make sure that like I have stretchy clothes on, and I'll make sure Marin can access sort of my full belly, especially my lower belly, and I have on stretchy pants, so that's a good. Right. And if you're before 20 weeks like Margo and you are having someone else feel, then obviously just be aware that, you know, often where we're starting to feel the uterus is pretty low near the pubic bone. Um, so just being comfortable, you know, exposing yourself wherever you are to whomever you're with um, is important because that's just where your uterus is. So if I'm going to help Margo out today, then I've washed my hands and hopefully they're not too freezing cold and I'm just going to ask her some questions and see what we feel. I could probably scoot closer too. Maybe like... Mm. There you go. There we go. Got an expert five-year-old videographer. Can you see us? Yeah. Okay. Okay. Can I could be here. Oh good. Okay. So, um, how early did you begin to notice anything with your uterus. When did you start palpating your own uterus? I think people want right. to know when to start that. Sure. I mean, since I'm sort of an obsessive birth nerd, I think I started feeling, you know, probably at like seven weeks when there wasn't anything to feel really. And then I think I started feeling like a swelling really down low, probably eight and a half, nine weeks. Right. And it's only gotten bigger since then. Yeah, um, sorry to expose you That's while we fine. keep talking, but I think one thing that we both wanted to point out was, or is, that there's lots of individual variation, especially at this point in pregnancy, especially before 20 weeks. So, you know, we learn as midwives that at 12 weeks there's a definite something to feel at a certain place in the uterus. That's mostly true for most women, but it might not be true for you. Um, you may feel something more than that. You may feel something less than that. Depending on where your uterus is even situated, you might feel nothing and everything is perfectly fine. So just keep in mind that this is Margot's beautiful body and this is what she's experiencing, but it may be different than what you are. Um, so why don't you point out what you're feeling and then... Sure. Um... I can definitely feel like extra firmness sort of down really, really low. And then if I follow it up, I can still feel firmness. And it's only if I sort of push in this way that I can feel a top to it. So the top is the fundus. That's what Margo was mentioning earlier. Um, my experience has been that when you point this firmness out to women, even that have had many babies before, some of them are, are shocked. They say, oh my gosh, that's my uterus? That's my baby? Um, it's subtle. So if you get used to feeling your belly, you know, the moment you get pregnant or even before, you'll have something to compare to. Um, most of us, you know, the rest of our, our bellies, even if we have pretty tight abs, it's squishy in the sense that there's nothing right. There's nothing nothing underlying there, it's not firm. Um, but as Margo's saying, if you start really low, seven, eight, nine weeks at the pubic bone, right above there, um, you may start to notice or even think you're imagining a slight firmness. So, you know, more that feeling than the squishy feeling. Mm -hmm. So Margo's found that place on her, it's growing all the time. Um, how about how you find Maybe like the sides of the uterus up to the up to the top, which is the fundus. Sure. I feel like the sides are harder, like they're not as like hard and fast. Um, but for me, it's more like a te like a tenderness or like a ooh, that's a funny feeling, um, as opposed to just poking around on my belly. There's like a definite like um, it's more just feeling. Here's firm, still firm not so firm mm -hmm. and there's just sort of a wibbly wobble in between so it's almost yeah. like a process of elimination sometimes in just day by day experiencing more and learning more 
and realizing in hindsight, oh, that's what I felt. That was my uterus growing. Um, so textbook-wise, at about 12 weeks, right, that's when we learn that we can finally feel a fundus. You could feel one before then, right. for sure. Um, but before 20 weeks, you know, it's more just a visual sort of on the belly of how high the fundus might be. And again, there's so much variation. You don't want to, you know, say that there's only one true thing. But where you're feeling, may I? Yes. It's about there, right? Mm -hmm. Is perfectly normal and wonderful and um, will just progress sort of textbook wise. So that by the time, you know, Margo's 60 weeks, it'll probably be about there and 20 about there. So again, that's helpful in confirming dates, perhaps, and just normal growth. Mm -hmm. Often early in pregnancy, you know, many of us are just holding on, waiting for that first kick. And monitoring your own uterus can be really um, encouraging that everything's yeah. going well. And I would just say, I think it's fun too, if you really had no idea where to start feeling, you can always do the sort of like, hmm, this is supposedly where it should be. So if you should be about 20 weeks at your belly button, you can just use your fingers to count down in the weeks. So for me, it'd be 20, 19, 18, 17, 16, 15, 14, I'm like 13 and a half. And it's like, it's yeah, perfect. Right there, which if it's not, it's not a huge deal. But it can help with sort of knowing where to start if you're sort of wandering around your belly aimlessly. But. Yeah, the last tip I would have would be, um, again, Margo said a flat surface can be really helpful early on. And for me, it was always easier, <coughs> excuse me, earlier in the day, like in the morning, to feel that sort of before you get bloated and all that towards the end of the day. So um, that can be helpful. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. Thank you. Hi, I'm Marin. And I'm Margo. And we're back today to finish our palpation video for you with a full term belly. Yesterday we got to talk about Margo's 13 week belly and today we're going to talk about mine. So just a couple things before we get started that I was pondering. The first is, I'm sure many of you that are pregnant already or have been before know that, you know, when you're out and about sort of walking down the street or in a store, people make all kinds of comments about a pregnant belly. Some are nice, some are less nice. But my point is that the kind of comments you'll get really are pretty irrelevant to what's actually clinically going on. So, for example, people might say, oh, you're so huge, you must be having twins, or the opposite, or make a comment about you being due any day, or not due at all, or um, who knows what. But the reality is, you know, you can look one way just from the front or even from the side, but when you lay down, there's a lot of information to be had that you just can't obtain from, you know, the average person, I should say, can't obtain from the outside. Um, but it can be tricky regardless. And I forget <laughs> the other thing again. Um, that just with practice. Right. Most people. Right. Just reminding you all that hopefully this is a helpful video, but it's not something that, you know, you may lay down with your belly and just immediately get. You may, but generally it takes practice. And with the women that we work with, we see that that's definitely true. It takes practice with a fetoscope. It takes practice to just identify what you're feeling. It's not rocket science, but if you do practice, then usually you get the reward of getting the information you want. So, uh, like we said before, before we start, um, Mira's made sure her bladder is empty and I have washed my hands. And we're gonna be using the same couch that we were on yesterday. Um, and I think for sort of the video's sake, we're going to be pretending that Marin has not done this before and is looking for some guidance. Um, so I'm going to kind of take her through what we would do with someone in person um, who wanted to learn more about palpation and ask her some questions and feel around and hopefully be able to show you 
since you can't feel through video, um, show you a weird feeling. Um, and yeah, anything else that comes to mind while we're doing it, we'll be sure to share with you. Okay. Ready? Mm. Oh my god, I'm gonna be so real. That's okay. How many hitting me? Okay, Rune, aim it this way. Are we in the picture? Yeah. Perfect. Okay. Wait, I just need to. Yeah, you okay. are. Okay. Thank you. Now, quiet and still, please. <laughs> Good job. So, I'm gonna make sure my hands aren't like freezing, freezing cold. Um, and before I even touch Marin's belly, I will say something like, where are you feeling kicks these days? Hmm, mostly over here. So over here. Yeah. Cool. So I guess this would be a good opportunity for our baby. So why would that be important? Um, if we're feeling kicks on one side and up or down, that gives us information about where the feet and legs probably are. And then we can sort of extrapolate where we might find the rest of the baby before we even put our hands on someone or before you even put your hands on yourself. Um, let's see, what else? Um, another good thing to do, Marin said, you know, just walking down the street, there isn't a ton of information you can get looking at someone's belly, but when they're laying down, you can maybe get a little bit more. So, you know, I'll just kind of, you know, you can't really do this to yourself laying down. So this would be more for... <laughs> Okay. Well, you can observe yeah. shape, I think. Yeah? What can you, do you notice from, like, where you are? Well, I notice that there's more over here. Sure. Sort of like a rise over here. Yeah. And then less over here. Yeah. So this side of Marin's belly looks sort of smooth and, um, you know, there's something in there longitudinally. And this side just looks like kind of a belly. <laughs> not so much happening right there. Um, what else? Any other questions before we get started? Any sore spots? I always like to make sure if I'm touching someone else's belly to not poke them Right. somewhere funny. Well, just on the sides sometimes, yeah. but more on the of... side where there's presumably more yeah. mass. Um, I think the other thing too is sometimes people get confused with movement because you ask them where do you feel movement most and most people will their brains will focus in on the legs because that's where you'll get the strongest most movement but hands obviously also move mm -hmm. so I know for me you know there's little I know their hands down there but for someone else um, the hand movement is just generally smaller smaller kinds of movements but you know for people that are trying to determine head or butt down, these are important distinctions. Cool. So usually the first thing that I like to do, or that we like to do when we're feeling bellies, is after we've kind of been able to already put a picture in our imagination about what might be happening there, then we use our hands to see if that's the case or if there's something else happening exciting. Um, and the way to start with that is to sort of feel on either side of the belly button, so the left and right sides, I'm just sort of feeling if one side feels, and this belly obviously has something over here on Mary's left. I need to go. And not so much over here on Mary's right, which makes perfect sense with where she said she's feeling kicks and where we can see that her belly is nice and smooth over here. So that all feels really like we would expect it. Oh, and a little wobbly uh -huh. something. Right, so consider there's, what parts would you have in your mind to identify for people? Right, so the first thing we're looking for is really the back. And that's what we can sort of identify pretty quickly in the this one side or the other sort of feeling and comparing. Then, what should we feel for next? Well, the kicks, I think, was a good clue. Mm -hmm. But then, picture, you know, picture a baby in there with a butt and a back and feet. You know, what do we have in the middle? 
knees in mm -hmm. a in a textbook position, which this baby is in. Yeah. So um, again, if your baby's in sort of a textbook position, then you can imagine firmness across from littler things going on. These little items mm -hmm. here. So then once we've figured out which side the back is on, we can start feeling what's at the top of the back and what's at the bottom of the back, or what's in the fundus and what's in the pelvis. So the way that we do that is we sort of feel where the back is. Point it over here, right? Point it on the belly. And keep feeling up until we can't feel anymore. And then we can kind of put our hands on one side or the other and feel in. I have the whole butt. <laughs> it's like moving. <laughs> Don't touch my butt. This one might be butt shy. <laughs> and we'll talk more about this in a second, but the butt feels sort of less distinct than the head. It feels just like a mass, and depending on how baby's feet and knees and everything are in there, you know. It doesn't feel like like a head would feel. So even without feeling down in his pelvis, I could guess that that is even the butt. Well a butt will move the mass of right. baby and a head would move independently of the baby. So we're back to finish the rest of this palpation video. Our wonderful five-year-old videographer has found something else to do. We have a more responsible 11-year-old videographer now, so we hope to have smooth sailing to the end of this video. <laughs> okay, so we've already established where Marin is feeling kicks over here, where we felt a back over here, and we felt up to the, as far as we can into her fundus, which was at the top of her back back and um, we are presuming that it's a butt and it feels a lot like a butt when we move it it moves the whole baby um, and next the kind of final piece is to follow the back down and see what's in Marin's pelvis um, did you want to say a word about feeling backs before we move on sure so this is considered a sort of textbook position of a baby for whatever that's worth you may or may not experience that I haven't always with all of my pregnancies so um, I'm not saying it's super important but textbook wise you know pretty pretty um, textbook to feel a butt and a back on either side of your belly really but what I did want to say is sometimes and often there isn't a back to really feel depending on the gestation of your baby depending on how active your baby is some babies like to be looking up and have their back against our backs, which is perfectly fine and normal. It just creates more movement out front. So it can be confusing because, like Margot asked me, where are you feeling kicks? I had a distinct place in my, you know, on my belly, but a baby that has its back towards mine, really you would feel movement everywhere. It would make it a little bit more confusing. But then when you went to palpate, okay, where am I feeling a hard part and, you know, a longitudinal mass, there really wouldn't be anything to feel because the back's turned around. So it's just one, one extra little thing to consider that, again, is perfectly normal but can, can be confusing. Excellent. So now that we're going to be feeling this direction, it's actually a lot easier if you're not the pregnant person to feel from this way and if you are the pregnant person you have to feel from this way so that works out um so we do the same thing just sort of feel the back my baby and sort of follow the back down and if you're having a hard time feeling the back um, one trick is you can kind of like push the other side of the belly this way um this one's pretty easy to feel so don't really need to do that too much and you just keep going until you sort of feel a drop off. And your baby's pretty in there. And so then we're gonna feel sort of in the pelvis for the baby's, in this case, head. Um, I feel like 
like when I first started doing this, I was surprised at the amount of sort of pressure or like the depth mm -hmm. that you have to go to to do that. So again, don't be afraid to sort of get in there and tell me if I'm poking too hard. You're gonna have to feel probably pretty low, especially at this point. And there it is, a good sized little baby head. And I can tell that it's a head because it feels a lot harder sort of more like a baseball mm -hmm. and it bounces back and forth whereas the butt was just kind of like a big chunk so there's some other things you can tell when you feel ahead too that maybe we could get to in like a advanced palpation okay. video but for our purposes today that feels like a head sure yeah. and I know on, you know when I've tried on myself it's certainly gotten easier over pregnancies, you know, my muscle was probably a lot more lax than it was, so it's easier for me to feel those things. And I remember a couple of pregnancies ago having trouble feeling ahead uh, for the reason you mentioned, is I was just kind of feeling on the surface and like didn't get anything, whereas the head is this way, and you really, if you want to feel it on yourself, have to press this way. Down past the bones. Mm -hmm. And what you're looking to do essentially is find the sides of the head. So you can kind of imagine, you know, a baby that's due, sort of the size of the head, um, and just kind of look for both sides. And you really can rock it from side to side unless it's completely in the pelvis, which happens. Mm -hmm. um, but more often than not, you can, you can feel it move from, to, from side to side. So that's one trick because I think a lot of people are concerned, you know, occasionally because they don't have palpation skills and they're planning on assisted birth or whatever. Or they just want to know, is my baby breech or not? They don't want someone else to tell them. Um, but the truth is, you know, head down or not can be tricky. And even the best palpation skills can miss a baby that's breech. That's just the reality of it. Yeah. I think if there's anything else. Um, I guess we could go back to the head feeling if we want to, but we are also going to say that, um, like we mentioned earlier, knowing where the baby's position is in your belly makes it easier to listen to the baby's heart rate with the fetoscope. Um, and we're not going to like go into that in too much detail, other than just talking about sort of how that works. And um, so if you imagine your baby's in there, really however they're in there, the place where you're going to hear the heart beat the loudest is sort of over their shoulder and over where their heart is. Um, so in this case, since we have a baby in there like this, we can reasonably assume the heart rate's going to be down here in like the lower left quadrant. Um, and when you start feeling your own belly and listening to your own baby with the fetoscope, you'll kind of figure out what um, what the position means in terms of where you're going to hear the heartbeat. Um, and you can pretty reliably find it in the same spot if the baby is hanging out in the same spot. So that's a nice, mm. a nice thing too. Well, and considering that most babies are head down, right. especially by 40 weeks, then even if you had no idea, honestly, what side the back was on, you could kind of just listen in a straight line mm -hmm. across the somewhat you know, lower part of the uterus. And if you know what you're listening for, you'll find it. And that can give you clues if you aren't clear about what the position is, and you're trying to sort of piece that together. So it can kind of go both ways. Right. Right. It's fun. Some other clues that people use occasionally um, are hiccups. That's one that comes to mind. So a baby starts to hiccup, gosh, probably 20 plus weeks. Probably can't feel it to a little bit later, especially if you don't know what you're feeling for. But by about 28 weeks, you can feel this like rhythmic jumping of the baby. And it's a lot like the heartbeat in the sense that it seems to be strongest over the baby's back for obvious reasons. Um, but, you know, I wouldn't use it as a defining factor of a baby being head down or not. Because I know I've felt hiccups with a head down baby up here because the whole butt shakes or the feet shake. Um, so that's, you know, kind of a clue. But probably not the best one for determining what's in the pelvis, according to me, anyway. Cool, well I think that that wraps it up. 
And as always, if you have more questions, feel free to let us know and we can make another video for you. Yeah. Any final thoughts? Happy palpating. Happy Enjoy palpating. your baby and feeling your own body and gathering this information and using it for whatever you're going to be in life.